Good morning. <coughs> so we're going to look at uh, gear design using AGMA equation, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we may not be able to finish this in one lecture. Uh, so there's lots of uh, parameters we to deal with, okay? Uh, what I wanted to do is I want to go through all the factors, okay? At the same time, um, I'll go through a particular example, basically. Uh, so let's lay down example first, okay? And then we'll uh, uh, calculate the factors, okay, based on this example. Okay, okay so the the, uh, uh, the example over here, or the design uh, example is diametro peach is mm -hmm. six. Okay, uh, number of pinion is 22, number of gear is 60. So you will have basically the gear ratio. Pressure angle 20 degree, so the pinion drives the gear. Then we have the input velocity, n is 1200 rpm, okay. Uh, input power, 15 horsepower. Okay. So let's say uh, the material we're you we're using for the pinion and gear are gray cast iron class 60. Okay. So uh, gray cast iron. Okay. Uh, class 40. Oh, that's no, yeah, 40. Okay. Class C I cast iron. We are going to assume a pinion life ten to the power of eight number of cycles. And we're going to assume a reliability. Okay, of zero point nine. Okay? So those are the uh, numbers we'll make use of in terms of design uh, for uh, this gear here. Okay, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe we can sh we shouldn't call it design in this case. Maybe we should call it uh, analysis, basically. Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, we're gonna calculate safety factor essentially. Okay, yeah. So first one, uh, some of the preliminary things just based on uh, just based on these numbers. Okay, so. What can we derive uh, preliminarily? Okay. Uh, first is uh, face width. Okay, face width. So face width, if you recall in the previous lecture, we have a empirical formula uh, saying that face width needs to be okay uh, within uh, this range. Okay, typically. Okay, and this question PD is six. So, which means uh, the face width is going to be 1.33 to 2.667. Okay. So, you can uh, pick a face width uh, integer numbers. Uh, uh, you don't want to pick a very weird number, you know, 1.5 to 2.5, right? Uh, they all uh, locate, so you can um, buy off the shelf for that much of face width, right? Yeah. So, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, in your future design project, uh, you you can actually try to vary the faith width, okay? Yeah, uh, given the range here. So let's say we're gonna pick f equal to two inch for this question. All right. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're using, as I said in the previous lecture. We're going to use uh, AGMA equation for design. So if you look at the AGMA equation, uh, it needs the transmitted load WT, right, for design. So some of the parameters we can actually calculate, okay, uh, based on the given uh, things. For example, WT. So let's calculate what is the transmitted load WT in this question. Okay, so <coughs> transmitted load. Okay, WT. 
So WT works the same for the pinion and the gear. Okay, so both pinion and, feet and the gear will feel this WT, the same model value. <coughs> and WT is a transmit load, so it's a direct related to the, the amount of uh, uh, power is being transmitted. First of all, the torque that is required to generate that amount of uh, input power okay, is related to this formula. Okay. So this is a formula we uh, derived from previous lecture. Okay. N is RPM and H is horsepower. Okay. So this is how you can use that. So uh, we have 15 horsepower and we have 1200 RPM. So the, N, the, the torque is approximately uh, this much. And the unit for the torque is the pound force inch. Okay. It's 0.5 here. So that's the torque. <coughs> The gear number and the diametral pitch are given. Then the pitch diameter, right? The pitch diameter of the pinion and the gear can be calculated easily. So pitch diameter for the pinion let's say we call it capital DP, okay, is basically the number of teeth on the pinion over uh, diametral pitch. Okay. So uh, 22 over mm -hmm. 6, which is 3.667 inch. Okay, that's pitch diameter. You need this much torque, right? You need this much torque, and you have the pitch diameter. So basically, the WT time half of this pitch diameter should be the same as the amount of the torque that is required. Okay, so then you can calculate this WT based on this uh, T over half of the pitch diameter, which end up with 430 okay, pound force. Okay, 430 pound force. That's transmit load. All right. So another parameter that we're going to make use of is this uh, pitch line velocity. Okay, so pitch line velocity is a parameter. If you recall that uh, we uh, actually uh, one specific parameter out of all the uh, AGMA, we just mentioned preliminary is that the KV. KV is called the dynamic factor, and that factor depends on the pitch line velocity, right? Yeah. So we can we should uh, calculate the pitch line velocity. Okay, uh, at this stage. Pitch line velocity is the velocity basically if this is a two pitch circle, right? And that's the velocity uh, at the point, pitch point. Okay, yeah. So V equal to omega times R. Okay, so angular velocity times uh, radius. And R is half of the diameter, right, of the pitch of the pitch circle. Okay. And omega uh, at a here uh, is uh, uh, omega at a here. It's it's not directly given, but it's given as a RPM, right? So we we need to convert the omega to RPM. So the other thing is uh, uh, the uh, this quantity at here is inch. Okay, this quantity is inch at here. Okay. Uh, when we convert to let's see, I'll, I'll leave a bracket here for now. Okay. And uh, this is 1,200 RPM, so revolute per minute. Okay, okay revolute per minute. If I convert that to, to reading per uh, revolute, so this is basically uh, two pi, right? Reading per revolute. Okay, like this. Okay, like this. Okay. Then the pitch line velocity, the unit. What you want is actually not going to be an inch per minute, what you want is feet per minute, okay? So, important, so you need the pitch line velocity to be feet per minute okay, for uh, the rest of the calculation. So, if this is the inch, I guess I need to uh, divide it by uh, 12 here, okay? So, feet per
per inch, one feet per inch. Okay? Yeah. So now you're pretty much all set. You can you can see if after all the dimension cancel, then the unit will be a feet per minute, right? Yeah. So uh, the value you get is 1,152 feet okay, per minute. Okay. All right. So that's all the preliminary calculation that's required for this question. So we can move on to find uh, all the parameters now. Okay. Yeah. But bigger picture first of all, huh? You need to have a bigger picture. So the bigger picture is. Bear in mind what what what's the objective of it here. So what do we need to do is okay. So step one, we need to find the bending okay stress okay the two bending stress. There's pinning and there's gear. So I'll use a sigma for the uh, uh, bending stress. So basically, you need let's say use a sigma b maybe for the pinning. And for the gear, okay. So we'll calculate these two. Okay. We will also need to calculate uh, the contact stress, and that's let's use a sigma c. So we have the uh, uh, same thing for the pinning for the gear, okay? Yeah. So that's the two stresses, two kind of stresses uh, in presence, okay, on the gear two. After you find the two stresses, and we need to find uh, the allowable stresses, or basically the strength, okay, so that we can compare, okay, then what would be the safety factor, okay? Yeah. So this is step one, okay. Then step number two is to find for the bending. So uh, we find, uh, let's see, maybe put it this way here. Uh, what's the strength? Okay. Actually, later you will find you'll see that uh, we call that uh, stress number. Okay. For bending and okay, contact stress. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for that particular value, okay. Um, let's see what's, what symbol do I use again? So I use a for I use a st prime and then sc prime, okay, okay for these two things set here. So once you find these two, okay, you have the strains, you have the stress, then you use the strains divided by the stress, then you get the safety number, okay? Yeah, that's the bigger picture. Is that okay? Yeah. So in order to uh, end up with what we want, and uh, ultimately, um, here is the the long lengthy equation we're going to deal with now. This is the uh, the the equation for. You don't need to write this; is too long here. So this is the equation for bending. Okay. So we look at each one of them, and this is the equation for the contact stress. So, I'll, what I'll do is, uh, I'll have my PowerPoint explain each one of the factors out of here, okay? And then I'll calculate each one of the factors according to this specific example that we just listed here, okay? Yeah. So then, at the end, when we finish all the factors, then that example will be finished. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, not uh, follow exactly the same sequence of this one here, but uh, uh, you'll see that, uh, okay, yeah, it'll work. So first, let's deal with the KO right here. KO is called overload, okay, factor, okay, overload factor. 
So what is overload factor? Okay, uh, it, it's basically. So come back to my PowerPoint. Okay, so we're just uh, going back and forth it here. Okay, yeah. Uh, overload factor is this. You want to maintain a uniform, basically, WT, right? You know, when you when you have two gears are pushing each other, okay? you don't want that uh, action reaction force to change constantly or to vary significantly, right? You want it to be maintained as a uniform here, okay? But the reality is, <coughs> there are always lots of uh, uh, other reasons, such as disturbances or uh, a shock, right? So you don't necessarily maintain the constant value. Say, for example, you are using a, a rotary, a drilling machine, as you see the people doing the road work, right? So you see the constant, basically, shock, you know, as an operator, okay? Yeah. So that's actually pretty, if there's a gear, you know, inside the machine, chances are there are, right? <coughs> <coughs> so you need this overload factor, okay? Yeah. But if you're, use, if you're uh, doing an experiment, controlled experiment, you have a DC motor drives <coughs> a set of a gear, okay? So that DC motor runs pretty smooth, and the gear runs, you know, very uh, smooth too, right? Yeah. So in that case, that shock is very minimal. So how do we find a fig KO? You use this figure. Uh, you can call the figure table. I don't remember. 14-7. Okay. Hopefully, it didn't change in the, the newest edition to find the KO here. So here is this. The power source, right? <coughs> is basically whether it's a motor or something else. And here is the dri a driving machine. Okay. Then. Uh, you figure out the corresponding KO. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you have a pretty heavy sh ro uh, shock. Okay, if you have a pretty heavy shock, you have a higher KO value, right? Yeah. So sometimes we call that service <coughs> service factor, right? Yeah. So that's the KO. Uh, in this particular example, I think I just assume that both the power source and the driven machine are uniform. So I'm gonna just pick one for this particular question, uh, example, okay? Yeah. So we're going to pick KO equal to 1 for this one here, okay? So you need to analyze the application, basically, for this uh, uh, design. For example, in the design project, you're designing a, a, a gearbox for a propeller, which is used in the boat. So the propeller will uh, operate uh, under the water, right? <coughs> So the water, there's going to be uh, underwater currents. So there might be something else, maybe going to hit the uh, fish or whatever. So there's going to be probably some kind of shock, right, at the uh, uh, output uh, driving side. Okay, yeah. But here, let's assume this one. Second one, dynamic factor, the dynamic effect factor. We we call it a KV, okay? So KV. So <coughs> here's a KV uh, in terms of the PowerPoint. Okay. First of all, you know what does KV compensate, right? I think I've explained this in the previous lecture. You want to maintain a uniform angular velocity, okay? Uh, but that's not necessarily going to be the case all the time. If you have a, uh, this many reasons, could be any one of them, right? You could hear some noise, could have a non-uniform angular velocity. So in that case, you will need this velocity factor, kV, to do the compensation. Okay. And here is the AGMA recommended okay, formula for this kV, all right? Yeah. So what are they? Uh, you can look at uh, the formula on page this is not exactly the, the page number for uh, uh, for the for the latest edition. This is probably for the eighth or ninth edition. So uh, be careful with that number, okay? And I didn't bother to change that. So uh, KV has this formula. Depends on three <coughs> parameters. Depends on A and depends on the V and depends on the B. And the V is that pitch line velocity, right? Okay. So V. Uh, a unit, you can take either standard or U.S. unit. So U.S. unit is feet per minute. Okay, 
yeah, no feet per second. The A and the B formula is this. Okay, so A is this, B is this. So look at the B. B depends on another form, uh, parameter, so the QV. QV is called a quality a factor. Okay, quality factor. So essentially, it, it's the quality of the gear you're buying. Okay, yeah. There are a, a different level of qualities. Okay. Um, so example, you in the next figure, I'll show you here. Okay. So there are different level of qualities. So ranging from five up to eleven. And when it's higher than 11, it's basically considered as a very accurate gearing. Okay? Yeah. So that's the QV, the quality there. Okay? The higher the Q, okay, if you look at this chart here, the bottom here is the pitch line velocity. Okay? Pitch line velocity. Uh, each one of the quality number actually has a what? Has a maximum. Okay, pitch line velocity. Okay, so that's recommended. Basically, maximum pitch line velocity you should run uh, given this quality number for the gearing. Right? Yeah. The formula for uh, for the uh, maximum is this guy here. Okay, this. So I'm gonna upload this PowerPoint. So no, don't worry about this. And there's I also have a lecture notes. So you have a two uh, different uh, source to look at those factors. Right? Uh, in general, the most commercial qualities are between three and a seven. Very precision is uh, from between eight and twelve. Okay, so when you design for a gear and you you actually need to make a decision is uh, what's the quality number that you're going to use. So are you going to use the pre very precision quality, which is more cost, right? Costy, and the other one is maybe you can choose a qual commercial quality, right? Yeah. So that's up to your uh, choice. Okay. Yeah. So anyhow, you see that uh, if you plug in all the numbers, right, and you will be able to uh, uh, to calculate uh, this KV here. Okay, this KV. So use your common sense. Now think about it. What would be the KV value when you have a higher QV? Would that be smaller or bigger? Right, KV. Where does the KV apply to? First of all, you look. The KV is applied to over here, right? It's applied to here. Remember, those AGMA factors. They are basically modification of the Lewis equation, right? Modification Lewis equation. Modification meaning either you're increasing it or you're decreasing it. Okay, given the consideration of different reasons. Okay, so here's the dynamic reason velocity if you have a if you choose a higher quality of gear what would, what would you expect the KV you think it's gonna be bigger or smaller compared to a low quality smaller right yeah so the higher quality basically you can run it at a higher speed right yeah uh, given the higher Q right if Q is higher then KV should be okay smaller should be smaller. So you don't need to explode the stress that much anymore, basically. Okay? Yeah. So anyway, so let's do this calculation of the KV at here. Okay. So KV equal to, uh, in this case, we pick the US unit already. So here is my formula for the KV. So A plus this over A times uh, to the power of B. So A equal to Okay, 50 plus 56, 1 minus B. So I guess I need to calculate the B first. So B is 0 0.25, 12 minus QV, 2 to the 3, to 2 over 3. Okay, so what, what QV shall we pick then, right? Okay, so, you know, just uh, out of no reason, just, just pick QV equal to 8. Okay, yeah. So plug it in. You get the B, you get the A, okay. and by the way, uh, I have a pretty good uh, template for you uh, to use, okay, in terms of the gear design. You will have Excel, okay. So uh, for assignments, okay, for the first assignment, first one that you're doing here, I would recommend, okay, that you tr 
by the calculator yourself, okay? But uh, once you get familiar with all the factor now, you can use the excels that I give it to you to do all the calculations, all right? Yeah. So uh, basically, all you need to do later is just punch in the numbers, okay, for the design parameters, and the rest of the numbers will be calculated automatically, okay? Yeah. But also, you need to get familiar yourself with how they are being uh, manipulated here, okay? Yeah. So. Anyhow, so we're gonna end up with KV is 1.28, okay? 1.28. That's dynamic effect factor, okay? And then size factor, okay? Size factor, uh, the gear and the pinion has different size, so this is a key S we're talking about here, okay? So we need uh, the key S for the pinion and the gear at the same time, okay? So we need the key S for pinion and we need the key S for the gear, okay, key S for the gear. So, size factor, huh, is basically a similar idea as uh, the size factor that you use in correcting the endurance, uh, endurance limit. Remember the SE prime, you have a size factor, isn't it, right? Yeah, but you gotta think of it this way that when you crack the in SE prime, what are you correcting? You're, you're correcting what? The strengths, right? You're correcting the strengths. But uh, here, what are we correcting in uh, the KS? It's correcting not the strengths, it's what? The stress. So, if I see the KS that here is the same idea, uh, over there we call it KB, right? As SE prime. It's a, if it's a, they are the same idea, then what would be this KS and the KB relationship? Uh, sorry, who said that? Inverse. Exactly, right? It would be the inverse. So this KS, right, is basically the inverse of the KB. Okay, that's the same idea. Is that good? So now, if you recall, how did we calculate the KB over there? So we had a different. Uh, situations, right? One situation is you have a circular shaft rotating, we have formula, right? And we have a, a non-circular shaft, for example, a rectangular uh, cross-section. But the force is a bending back and forth, right? But in that case, if you remember, uh, I'm not going to try to go too much details there, we, had a, we have to calculate so-called what? An equivalent diameter or size DE, right? Yeah. So anyway, so this is the gear. This is not a circular shaft. And the gear we consider as a cantilever beam. So the cross section of the, ca of the cantilever beam is actually what? It's a rectangle, right? A rectangle. So we can make use of that idea to get the KB. Then we inverse that to get the KS. Okay? Yeah. So you, you should, uh, I'm, I think I skipped a few steps here. You can look at my lecture notes in terms of the derivation of the KS, okay? So here is basically some of the ideas, which is exactly what I, s what I just said there, okay? Yeah, to get the KS. So anyhow, in the end, you'll get your KS, okay? Which is this guy here, okay? Which is this. So not a key, not KS, it's a mistake. That should be KS. Okay, so I'm going to write it down in here. So KS will be 1.192 And F Y over P D zero point zero five three five. Okay, that's the formula for K S. Okay, for K S. Okay. okay. Um, you look at this formula here, and apparently, uh, what does it depends on? It depends on diametral pH. It depends on the face width. And it depends on the capital Y. If you recall that, we call that, what do we call it again? It's called Louis form factor, right? Louis form factor. So, Louis form factor, we need to look it up from uh, so let me see, where's my Louis form factor table?
is my Louis point five. Maybe in the here, right here, here. So for table fourteen dash two, there. So this is where you 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 ex you look up so many different uh, tables basically. Okay. Okay. So many tables here. Okay. Face width and the diametral pitch, uh, typically they're, they're going to be the same for the pinion and the gear. But you could have a smaller face width on the pinion than the gear, so it, it could be, okay? But let's assume both the pinion and the gear at here have the same face width. So the only difference for the pinion and the gear is actually what? Is the Y, right? Because one, the pinion has 22 and the gear has 60. So you can see YP is 0.331 and YG is 0.422. Okay, this is a 14-2. Okay, table 14-2. Uh, face width we calculated. Face width we calculated is the two inch, and PD is six. So then you can get your KS for the pinion and the KS for the gear. So. Uh, that's approximately 1.091, and this is 1.098. All right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the size. That's the size factor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going here. Second, that this one here is a little bit uh, uh, more complicated than the other one. It's called load distribution okay, factor, KM, okay, load distribution factor. So this factor here, okay, so it shows up in both the bending and the painting stress. So low distribution factor, okay, let me go back to my PowerPoint, okay. There. Uh, it's a similar idea like the, uh, the velocity one there. So low distribution is you want your uh, distribution of the load across the line of contact, okay, and even a across this contact of this pair of gears. If you have a two pair of gears or one pair of gears in contact, you know, you want them to be uh, distributed even there. However, you know, you can have so many different reasons. For example, you have a misalignment, inaccurate gear tees, okay, or there's backlash, the thermal effect, okay, and a lot of things. So then uh, the load is not going to be evenly distributed, okay? Yeah. And that's where you apply this load distribution factor, KM. All right. Yeah. So we're uh, in the uh, in the in the lecture here. There's a little bit more sophisticated uh, formula for the KM. Okay, I'll write it down here for the uh, more sophisticated one there. Okay, but uh, we are not going to use exactly that one there. So, but uh, I'll show you what it is for now. So, KM equal to one plus C M C multiplied by CPF, CPM, plus CMA, CE. Okay? This is the original formula for KM. So what are each one of these here? So first four, CMC. Okay. CMC is this. Uh, Cron or okay. Sorry, this is uncrowned, okay, and this is crowned. So it's a gear teeth. It's like your teeth, basically. You know, you crown, basically, you put a layer of things on the teeth, right? Yeah. Uh, that's crowned. That's uncrowned. But we're going to use this uncrowned here. So we basically, we're going to set CMC to be 1. Not replacement. It's just uh, you're sort of uh, increased the thickness of the gear. Yeah, make your teeth a uh, little bit uh, 
stronger now, right? Yeah. I'm sure if you go to a dentist, and you know, there's sometimes you recommend a crown, right? Yeah. No. Okay. So lucky you. So. <laughs> um, CE, okay. CE is a condition, basically. Uh, C point one and eight. Uh, this thing is for gearing adjusted at assembly, okay. and this is for other condition. So anyway, it's a pretty weak things here, but uh, you know we're going to use one for this case too. Okay. So we don't need to, if we buy things, you know, we, we don't want to adjust again, right? We just want to, whatever it is, okay? Yeah, that's CE. Okay. And then you have a CPM. CPM also has two, one is one, 1.1. 1 .1. So this quantity here, okay, this quantity. So again, we're gonna take one. So what this guy here is, uh, basically this thing is for straddle. So all gears we're considering is here's the bearing, okay? There's a bearing in here. Okay. Then you have the shaft, okay? In the middle of the uh, uh, sh you have the shaft carried by the bearing, uh, supported by the bearing. Then your gear maybe is mounted, okay? Somewhere between the bear the bearing here, okay? Somewhere between the bearing, okay? Yeah. Then uh, it would have a certain distance. Okay, to the center here. Okay, to the center. Okay. So that's called a straddle mount. Okay, straddle mount. It's like you're sitting on a horse, essentially. Straddle, right? Uh, you learn vibration. So when you have a shaft, when you have a load, and uh, so you would have a deflection basically because of the shaft, right? Yeah. Uh, if you if the gear is not in the middle here, and uh, because of this uh, deflection, and guess what? You will have this misalignment basically, huh? Yeah. But in the middle here, uh, it, it's actually probably uh, easier because uh, the deflection, right? It's fl the slope is is a, is a flat, is zero. Okay. Yeah. So that's basically the reason to adjust this uh, because the straddle mount given the CPM here. So the one at here, uh, essentially, if they co we call this is a distance S uh, S one. Okay. And uh, if the total uh, distance is S here. Okay, so when S1 over S is less than 0 0.175, you use 1. Otherwise, you use uh, 1.1. Okay, now, anyway, to simplify the situation, let's assume basically CPM to be 1. Okay, yeah. So now this brings us to the simplified uh, KM now to the formula I listed in my PowerPoint here. So it becomes 1 plus CPF plus CMA, okay? So this is the formula I uh, used in the uh, Excel sheet, I think, okay? Yeah. So a little bit uh, details about what is CPF, what is CMA. So CPF is called pinning proportion factor. CMA is called mesh alignment factor, okay? If you want a detail, you can buy the AGM standard for more details. It's actually not free, it's more very expensive. And I've uh, never seen that. So this is a formula for CPF. Okay. Yeah. CPF okay, works for a face width less than 40 inch. Okay, 40 inch. And uh, frankly, I don't know what's going to happen when F is for over 40 inch. There's no uh, formula in the textbook, but 40 inch is humongous, right? Yeah. Now, one thing that you have to be very, very careful in using this is CPF, okay? You look at the CPF, depends on the face width. It also depends on the D at here. That D is the pinion pitch diameter. So it doesn't matter whether you're calculating this for the pinion or the gear. The D is always the pinion pitch factor, okay? Yeah. So in my formula, I have used the pinion pitch form, pinion pitch diameter, uh, pinion pitch diameter. Now, if you're curious, you say, "Oh, I'm calculating the stress for the gear now." Then I should change the D to uh, a, a gear. 
so, but you are wrong, okay? So try not to change the formula. Got it? Yeah, because every time when I, when I examine the, the design project, the first thing I look at is, I look at, this, did you change my formula? Okay, and every time there are always people change that, okay? Guess what? If you change that, that's the starting point, right? This one number is wrong, everyone thinks wrong, okay? Yeah, so that's the danger, right? Okay, so that's CP, okay? CMA. <coughs> this is CMA here, okay? Uh, CMA is a second order equation, A plus BF plus CF square, okay? The F is the face width. ABC is from table 14-9, okay? So what does ABC depend on? It depends on the condition of the gear. Yeah. Is the open gearing, commercial, enclosed, or precision, or extra precision, you know, stuff like this. For a very detailed definition of each one of these, okay, you can look at my lecture notes as to what, what exactly uh, would uh, qualify as the open gearing, commercial, precision, or extra precision. All right? Yeah. So, anyhow, see, so this is the overall picture now for key M. Okay? So, you need to calculate a couple of things in order to get the key M. So in my case here, so in this example, what do we end up with for the KM? So let's say I'm picking open gearing, okay? Pick open <coughs> gearing for this case. Uh, if we pick open gearing from the table 14-9, your A is 0.247, your B is 0.0167. <coughs> your C is this much, okay? <coughs> so you can calculate your C M A point two eight. Then your K M, your C P F, right? You also need the C P F. Your C P F, uh, the face width is only two inch. So uh, if you look at the formula. 2 inch, so we're picking the second one here, right? <coughs> Use the second one for the CPF, okay? And that's F over 10D minus 0 0.035 plus 0.0125F, so that end up with a 0 0.042. So and your key M is 1 plus, uh, 1 plus bracket C PF plus CMA. Okay, we're setting all other parameters to be one. So this end up with 1.322. Okay, 1.322. So this this formula, this KM applies to both pinion and a gear, okay, and the same value for both for both pinion and a gear. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now we our next one is KB. Okay, so KB. So KB is called ring thickness factor. So let's finish this one here, then we can call it D. Okay, ring thickness factor. So let's say what is ring thickness factor? <coughs> okay. Uh, it's very common that you remove certain amount of material. Okay, for the gear because you want to reduce the weight, right? Yeah. So you will have a, this so-called constant ring, right? You know, uh, and it's the web at here. But now, if you remove too many, too much material, then consider what happens is the whole assumption for gear design is you assume the gear is a cantilever beam attached to a very rigid and strong base, right? So if you remove too much material, then <coughs> chances are, <coughs> there is a chance is, uh, the stress may not even happen at the base, at the root location. It may be <coughs> it actually start to creep into this uh, 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 rim location, right? So the rim is not, maybe not as even as strong as you think now, right? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is where this rim thickness factor comes into the picture, all right? So how do we calculate the rim thickness factor then? 
it depends on a <coughs> ratio called backup ratio. It's a division between TR and HT. So here's ATR and HT here. TR is the ring thickness. HT is the basically what we call the whole uh, working uh, depth. Okay, it's from the top to the dedenda. Okay, right. <coughs> that's HT, and that's the ratio MB. If MB is less than 0.2, <coughs> you will use this formula. If MB is greater than 1.2, this ratio, you're going to use this just 1, okay, KB. So basically it's thick enough, right, compared to the uh, whole working depths, okay, then you use 1. So in this case, we're going to assume we don't have that kind of a okay, problem, so we're going to use 1. All right. Any questions? Yeah. So I think I'll call it uh, stop it here, and we have a few more to finish. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, we can finish the next review.